something to build on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is a blessing to have you here in God's house to start off a wonderful day of worship. I want to thank John for being so unfortunate as to walk in just when the bell needed to be rung, but he stepped to the, to the challenge. Yes, he did. Having heard the bell, let's hear a word from God as well as we start our worship service. Um, I'm going to read from the 57th Psalm as we start today. Verses 9 through 11 as we begin our worship. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. That is the God who we are here to worship this morning. So let us pray as we lift him up. Father, Lord, what a joy it is to be in your house this morning. What a joy it is to be with your people, our co-heirs with Christ. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, your goodness, your abundant patience. Lord, without your blessings upon us, we'd be unable to come and draw near to you and worship. But you have sent your spirit to draw us close to you. And so, Father, this morning, this time right now, may your spirit draw our hearts fully and completely to you. Incline us to worship you with all that we are, because you are worthy of nothing less than that. So may the meditations of our heart and the psalms in our mouths this morning, Lord, may they be pleasing in your sight. Yes. And we pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Words from God, words to God, and a joyful noise, perhaps. Hey. <laughs> Good to have you here as we uh, embark on our first worship <coughs> service 
of already the second month in the year. Just to let you know, that first month is gone already in this year that just begun. Amen. So, if in case you needed a clue, that's the way life goes, isn't it? It just is gone in a heartbeat. So, we've got to be sure to live in the present. The future will take care of itself. Let's seize this moment, especially this time right now, where we can just give ourselves fully to worship. Got a few announcements, just to make sure that you all know. Um, we're doing a Bible study starting at 9.15 on Sunday morning, so before church for a half hour. We're in the book of Revelation, and so just in case any of you have any doubts or questions about how it all ends, you might as well learn it from the book. Amen. And so we'd love to have you join us as we walk our way through the book of Revelations, 9.15 to 9.30, back in the ministry building on Sunday mornings. There's going to be an organizational meeting after church today, immediately at following church, in regards to the reestablishment of the bylaws committee. Um, John Hinchy is going to chair that committee. And so just if you're interested in serving, having some input into that process, just stick around after the church service. We'll have a meeting and, and discuss how that's going to be organized and operated. Want to remind you all that there is a, the Fuss Gallon Council election coming up on Saturday. They're going to have that in the ministry building as well. If you're going to do in-person balloting, I know that there are ballot boxes throughout the island, but um, just want to encourage you all to have your input as you can in terms of voting in that as well. Some of you may have noticed there's a good-looking gentleman behind me. General Hay is here again. He's going to deliver our message for the day. Delighted to be able to continue having him come here on a monthly basis. For those of you that didn't know, he is now the interim pastor at the first African Baptist Church on Hilton Head. I think I, I should have thrown out the historic first African Amen. Baptist Church at the beginning of that. And so how long we have him with us on a monthly basis, we don't know. But we got him, and he's here. Amen. And so we're grateful for that as well. And I'm going to use that as a bit of a segue because this week, I, I don't normally talk about birthdays a whole lot unless it's somebody has the misfortune of having a birthday on the day that we have a worship service. Mm -hmm. But I do want to point out that normally, Sister Wiley, who'd be sitting right there, um, she's got a birthday coming up this week. Catherine up there has a birthday coming up this week. That's a big one. She turns 18. Yeah. <laughs> and then... General right here has a birthday coming up on Sunday as well. So just a big birthday weekend worthy, week worthy of our acknowledgement. So I throw that out there. Are there any other announcements to the congregation that we need to know about? Okay. Not seeing any others. So in that case, I am seeing some faces that might be here for the first time or second time. I'm seeing some faces that are here regularly. I am assuming, though, that there is no one that's in here right now that can go from every person and say their name. I would like for you, as an act of worship, to break down those barriers that prevent us from truly fellowshipping better. By maybe getting to know the name or something a little bit more about somebody that you only partially know. Look around. And, again, to the extent that this, this always goes without saying, to the extent that you feel comfortable in terms of social distancing and, and whatever you feel you need to do. But I would like for you to at least engage at some level with somebody that you don't know. Because at some point, if we are all born again and have the Holy Spirit living in us, we're going to spend a lot of time together in the future, but we might as well start that fellowship now here on earth. So spend a few moments, if you would, please. Get up out of your seats. Engage with one another in an act of fellowship. <laughs>
tell you, as you, some of these songs, I don't know how they touch you when you sing them, if they do, but it occurred to me, thinking about the angels singing in heaven, at our Father's mansion that he has prepared for us. And this is probably bad of me, but the thought came through my head was, I bet they all have perfect pitch. <laughs> and they're not wearing a that's right. They're not wearing masks. They have perfect pitch. And I am counting on my redeemed body being perfect even in the ability to sing. Because I'd love to sing better than I can right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway. sing just fine. Give me those two-note range and I'm good. So, you know, we need to be able to laugh and sing and rejoice as we have our time of worship. Um, life is hard. Yes. We go through trials and tribulations, but mm -hmm. in and through it all, backstopping all of it, should be this realization of joy in our hearts. Yes. Because the victory has already been won. The battle has already been fought. Uh huh. We have to play it out here in this world, and we all do it differently. God has different plans in store for each and every one of us, but... There is joy in knowing what comes. That song is such a beautiful reminder of it, and I'm grateful for it. Anyway, one of the things we do here, and I know some of you aren't regulars here, um, or perhaps enough to know that we do this every week, but a time of prayer requests and praise reports and testimonies is a, is a core part of our worship service. Um, we are called to pray without ceasing. We're to always be in communication with God, but... What do we pray for? Mm -hmm. God calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Yes, and right. therefore, one of the easy ways that we can do that is in the midst of our prayer time, to be praying for a brother or sister in Christ, in addition to whatever else is on our hearts and minds. And so this is an opportunity for us to be better about loving each other, a time of prayer requests and praise reports and testimonies. Amen. Um, it's not putting yourself out on somebody else to ask them to pray for you. It's an invitation for them to walk hand in hand with you. Right. An invitation to be as Christ would have us be mm -hmm. to one another. Yes. And so I throw that out there because sometimes people just, they want to stay quiet about prayer needs. They don't want to let somebody else know. Maybe it's a sort of sense of pride. Maybe it's a sense of embarrassment. Maybe it's just they were taught. You keep it internalized. But prayer requests strengthen us. Mm -hmm. Praise reports give hope to those who are going through a difficult time. Yes. Testimonies share what God has done in your life. An interactive portion of our worship service, our worship isn't so filled with entertainment and preaching that we don't have time for life. And so I want you to take this invitation right now to help us be better as a community rooted in Christ. <clears throat> Praying for one another. Mm -hmm. I know that was a pretty big buildup. <laughs> Would anybody like to offer up a prayer request at this time? Yes. yes. For my friend Sharon, uh, this summer I had asked for um, a prayer request for her. She had brain surgery because she had metastatic breast cancer that had gone to her brain. And uh, two weeks ago I was able to visit her when I was home in Illinois. And she is truly doing so remarkably well after that major, major surgery. And so, I mean, that's a huge continued prayers, but also amazing grace in her life. Fantastic. Thank you. Other prayer requests, praise reports, testimonies. Kathy. Prince Brian Paul. Or Brian is uh, still not down and out with back issues. And just pray that Lord will put his hand on him and bring him some relief. Yeah, and I can tell while we're thinking about back prayers, we should be sliding one pew over to John as well. <clears throat> Sally, I saw your hand going up. Yes, I continue, would like to continue praying for me, my family, all those who come and stay and visit the island, all those who be honest in this world, dealing with situations, um, life trials and tribulation, just want to pray for us to get through this pandemic and each and every one of us um, 
just give God thanks for whatever he um, comes in your life. Amen. Other prayer requests? Praise the Lord. Tanya. I have two. So I have a praise report that our women's workout group that meets Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 6 a.m. in the youth building right now, we had 11 people on Friday. We've grown so much. It's great to see all these women come out right early in the morning. So let's pray that we will continue to grow. And then I have a medical procedure on Wednesday morning, so prayers that it goes very smoothly. And, and Tanya, just so people know, that, that group of women gathering, it's not just working out. It's, there's a time of devotion at the end, right? We work out for about 40 to 45 minutes, and then we have a little devotion at the end, and prayer request, and a prayer. So. And you've got women coming to that that aren't here in this church right now. That's right. So that may be the time that they're getting exposed to what it means to live in Christ. Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Other prayer requests, prayer supports, yes. Um, John in your prayer, he's still in need of a kidney. Um, he is um, he is doing well. Um, just keep him in your prayers. Um, he's happy, and I'm happy for him. And I'm happy that God has we've walked through this. Leticia's brother-in-law, I think. Or... It, it's, <coughs> she said it's his nep her nephews. And he's going in for his second surgery, I think, tomorrow. He had one surgery on his arm. The second one on his arm tomorrow. Okay. Other prayer requests, praise reports, testimonies. Yes. Mike. Well, uh, prayers for our daughter Hannah, who's in basic training at Blackman. Air Force Base, and uh, the Lord had his arms around her and got her in the direction. Okay, absolutely. Other prayer requests, praise reports, testimonies. All right. In that case, you regulars here, you know the drill. We're gonna we're gonna have a time of corporate prayer. I'm gonna lead us through these prayer requests. Just be listening with an attentive spirit. When one of these prayer requests touches your heart, take ownership of it, write it down, put it in your phone, whatever it takes, and then break it out. When you have your regular quiet time with the Lord, lift up that prayer as well. And if you see the person that you're praying for later on in the week, check with them, see how they're doing, follow up on that prayer request, because that just validates to them that you cared enough about them to be praying for them. That means a lot. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, Lord, it is a privilege, something we should never take for granted, the ability to come before you with prayer. Yes. You are a good and gracious God, and you know the whole story. And so you know what is best and right for us. And you invite us to come before you. And so we come, Father. We come as your yes. people. Lord, we want to lift up to you praise for the healing that you have done in Sharon from her recovery from the brain surgery. But Lord, the battle continues, and we pray that you would continue to be with her, right alongside her, comforting her and guiding her, helping the doctors and nurses with their treatment as well. Lord, we want to lift up to you Brian Cobb and also our brother John here. Lord, their backs are failing them and are painful mm -hmm. and Lord you are the great physician and we know that there are so many different ways to heal and so many different ways to treat but we know that it starts with you and so we lift up these gentlemen to you Father and we pray for your healing we pray for your gentle touch Lord we want to lift up to you Sally her family was close to her Lord we pray that your arms would be around them as well 
blessing them with the full knowledge of you and your goodness and your mercy. Lord, may you be enough in their lives and giving them a reason to rejoice, causing them to seek you with all their being. Lord, we want to pray also for so many who are going through difficult times and tribulations. Lord, this is a fallen world and perfection awaits those who are in your kingdom. Yes. But we must go through these difficult times in the meantime. And Lord, we just pray that, that you would grant us wisdom that we can handle these difficulties with grace and mercy as well that reflects your love to a world that needs to see it. Yeah. Father, we want to give you praise that you have grown in number those women willing to gather early in the morning to work out and be stewards of the physical body that you have blessed them with, but also to praise you in their time of, of yes. worship yes. as well. May you be glorified in that. And may you also be with Tanya on Wednesday morning for her medical procedure, Father. We pray that that would go smoothly and that her recovery would be swift. We want to lift up to you, John Coulter. And Lord, we just ask that you would help him, help him to get the medical treatment that he needs. May a kidney be made available that he can have that transplant that he is waiting for. And Father, in the midst of this, may he rest wholly and completely in you and on you, Father. And may he know you. Lord, we want to lift up to Matisse's nephew. And as he goes through another surgery as a result of the car accident he had this past week, we pray that you would bring about healing, restoration, the use of that arm. Lord, we don't know why these things happen, but we know that you have a reason. And so we just pray that, that he would know you, rest upon you as well, and that you would strengthen them as a family. And Father, we want to lift up to you, Hannah, as she is going through basic training right now. Protect her, Lord. Keep her strong. And as she grows in strength and goes through this process, may she do so knowing that you are the one who numbers her steps and gives her the strength to persevere. Father, there are many other prayer requests in the hearts and minds of your people who are gathered here today. But we know that your Holy Spirit, who searches our innermost being, has already carried forth even those that we have not lifted up. Spirit has laid them before you, Father. And so you know all that we are and all that we need. And we trust that you will do that which is best and right. So we thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy and your love. And we praise you in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Well, as we continue along in our worship service, we've reached our time for a scripture reading. Anna's going to come on up and read to us from Acts. chapter 17 verses 22 through 28 17 Acts 17 22 through 28 Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said men of Athens I see that in every way you are very religious for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. Now, what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed something, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and, be de and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. The word of the Lord. Amen. 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 All right, as we continue on in our worship <coughs> service, it's time for our offering. And Bill and Bill, can I call you gentlemen to press you into service and pass the plate around? Again, a reminder that 
passing of the plate, while important in terms of allowing this church to, to take in the funds that it needs, is also symbolic of a much larger offering that we are called to make of our lives. And so Amen. just contemplate that, how you have been blessed to be a blessing to others and what that offering could mean to furthering God's kingdom. Gentlemen? This morning, let's uh, give thanks to our God that he may use uh, these blessings of our hearts to advance his kingdom on this island and make us aware of his presence in our lives to continue to nurture each one of us. In Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Amen. We have, a, have a, what, another song, Kathy?
one who is God and God all by himself. Does not need us, but we need him. Again, we want to just thank God for Pastor Crosby, First Lady Jan Crosby, and I see the second daughter, Catherine. Amen. We just give God praise for the first family. We want to thank God for First Sister Hayes. We give God blessings and praise everyone in their respective places. But we realize that you didn't have to come out this morning, but you did. And we say thank you. Thank you. But truly, God is moving. Uh, listening to some of your prayer requests, just want you to know that God hasn't forgotten you. Just hold fast to his unchanging hand. and He has a way of making ways out of no way. Continue to trust him for all things. Let us lean not to our understanding, but let us lean on him, believe in him, and know that he has made a promise to us a long time ago. He said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the earth. And then he goes on to say, I will never forsake you, nor leave you alone. That's a promise, church. So we have something, I mean, we can hope, and we have a hope that is valid, a hope that is in Christ Jesus. He's not going to forsake us, nor leave us. Realizing that, thank you, Sister Stan, for the scripture reading. <laughs> uh, February is said to be Black History Month, but I just want all of you to know that the accomplishments that black Americans have made, many of those accomplishments would not have been possible if it had not been for our Christian Caucasians that stood in the trenches, worked and suffered right along with black Americans. Let us know that we are all God's children. And this is uh, just because it's Black History Month. I want you to know that uh, Anglo-Saxons, Caucasians, whatever you want to call yourself, you have something to do with that. And we just say thank you, Jesus. Amen. And cry out hallelujah. hallelujah. Give Jesus the highest form of praise because he is worthy to be praised. Yes. Out of that uh, 17th chapter, which was read in your hearing, um, 23rd down to the 28th, but we want to concentrate on the 26th verses out of Acts 17th chapter. As we know, Acts, the author of Acts is Dr. Luke. And we know that Paul was with Luke every now and again. But we know that the book that you have been discussing, uh, that Pastor Cross has been working from, the book of Romans, uh, written by Paul. And therefore, Paul and Luke had a lot in common. In that 26th verse, it reads, and has made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. Abba Father, Abba Father, again we come before you, O oh God, with thanksgiving. We come right now, O oh God, asking that you bless these, your people, with the blessing that you see they stand in need of. O oh God, you have heard 
the petitions that have gone up to you. And I ask right now that you just bless them, O oh Heavenly Father. Make them a reality. And then, O oh God, continue to give all of us our heart desire. Be ever so close to us. Strengthen us, O oh God. And, O oh God, continue to be that perfect peace that passes all understanding for us. And I ask right now, O oh Heavenly Father, that you hide me behind the cross so that only you can be seen. Speak so loud to these, your people, so that only you can be heard. Speak to me and through me. And then, O oh Heavenly Father, when we can't come, stand before the living and the dead. Preaching day is going to be over. Singing days are going to be over. I ask that you give us a resting place where we'll be able to praise your name forever. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Speaking on that 26th and 27th verse of the 17th chapter of Acts, we want to talk about everybody's God, somebody, part two. Part one was delivered some time ago. But everybody is God's somebody. He has made of one blood all nations for to dwell on all the face of the earth. You see, my friends, we find the Apostle Paul in the metropolitan center of Athens in Greece. He's preaching to he's preaching the gospel, and this is his chance now to use his training in Greek language and philosophy stretched out on what Gamaliel, his teacher, had taught him. You see, Athens was the educational and cultural center of the world. Philosophers would pace up and down the Lyceum and ponder the most profound questions about life and death, time and eternity, knowledge and feeling the real and the imaginary. Here Socrates had taught Plato. Plato had taught Aristotle. And Aristotle had taught Alexander the Great. But now Athens is visited by a Jewish tent maker from Tarsus, short in stature bald-headed, and a Roman citizen preaching that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. See, my friends, there were all sort of groups in, <clears throat> in Athens. There were the Stoics, there were the Epicureans and the Hellenists, believers in all sorts of nature gods. But Paul reminded them that they had a town full of gods and goddesses, but he didn't come to tell them that, he just came to tell them that there was but one God who had made the world and all that's in it told them that God didn't live in temples made with hands and he doesn't need any idols carved in his arm. Doesn't need anything. God has made of one blood all men to dwell on the face of the earth. Paul informed the Athenians that he didn't come to organize a small following. He only came to tell them that the whole human race was one. One God had made all people. 
that in Christ God was and is still bringing this whole human family to a knowledge of himself. In other words, in Christ, everybody is God's somebody. The truth is that no matter how poorly we as Christians have shown love in practice, the outstanding feature of the life and teaching of Christ is that he reached beyond his own people and shed abroad the love of God in the lives of all people. Jesus treated all persons as though they were all God's children. But you see, you see, God has no favorites. He loves you and he loves me. In, in spite of because we haven't done everything he wanted us to do. We haven't gone every place he wanted us to go. And yes, we've said some things that we should not have said, but in spite of all, God's grace and God's mercy is there for you and me. You see, God, but you see, we are all his children, and he sent Christ to save us all. This is what makes Christianity available to everybody. Oh, yes, Christianity has been criticized because of the failure of individual Christians. Not all. There may be a lot wrong with some of, some of us, but there's nothing wrong with Christianity. Oh, it can pass any test, for there is abundant and abundant evidence that the principles of morality and ethics and the human relations that are found in Jesus' teachings meet the test of the highest scrutiny from the secular points of view. Jesus' ideas about human development are compatible with the most widely accepted ideas of modern psychology. You see, his view of the worth of persons is the cornerstone of our modern de 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 democracy. This world needs anything this morning. It is a wider acceptance, a more faithful practice of, and a deeper commitment to those ideas and ideals as set forth by that marvelous preacher and teacher and healer from Galilee, whom we know to be the son of the living God. Jesus not only taught these concepts, but he lived them stretched out his arms to the people of all nations and all backgrounds, healed a woman's daughter of an ailment which had been described possession by the devil. The woman was a Greek from Syrophoenicia. He healed ten lepers one day, and one of them was from Samaria. He was in Capernaum on one occasion when a Roman captain came and told of a servant in his household who was sick. And when Jesus saw that this foreigner had faith in God, he went with him to the house to heal his servant. He was a man for all people. No wonder that when he was sentenced to die, the cross that prepared for him was carried by a black man named Simon from Serene. Paul's faithful helper, young Timothy, was half Jew and half Greek. Christ tore down the wall, ignored our tribal habits, and he celebrated the dignity of all persons in the sight of God. For in Christ, everybody is somebody. Oh, and Paul was only far as the example of Christ when he said God is made of one blood, all nations. That was the theme of his great sermon out on Mars Hill. But now, but now, in further witness of what Christ teaches, there is the obvious physical kinship that all men are made of one blood. The great contribution of the black medical expert, Dr. Charles Drew, was the proof to the world that except for blood types, types that all races have in common. Human blood is the same. Dr. Drew pioneered in taking ordinary blood from anyone and dehydrating it. 
Oh, he made it into squares like yeast cakes, and on the battlefield it was liquefied again and given to anybody whose life was dependent on a new blood supply. Blood from poor donors in dingy ghettos could save lives just as well as blood from Buckingham Palace. Have mercy, my Lord. <laughs> oh, we are all children of one father. We have the same needs and drives and urges, the same hungers and the same cravings. All people want security. All people want to be appreciated. One reason that we as a people have clung so dearly to Jesus despite the apostasy and the failure of Christian expectations of one another through colonialism and right racism is that blacks have found in Jesus have to be real. Oh, he not only blacks know that he's real, but whites know that he's real too. He's real within our souls. Why, in truth, we are one human family. Everybody is God somebody. Oh, we all should have a God hunger, a need to know the creator. We should need to know the father of all humankind, the grand architect of the universe the spirit of the living God, of all the ways in which our common humanity is manifest. Our common need is to know God is the strongest evidence of our kinship. Oh, my friends, we need to know this morning that we need to just know that God is not going to leave us. And he loves us. And we are kin by blood. We are God's children. Church people far too long committed the grievous sin of being comfortable while dignity was being stripped from God's children. Why in God's sight we are all equal. And we as church folk must convince our young people that no matter how society perceives them or treats them, they are still God's precious children. Oh, we must convince them that they are loved with an infinite love and that when Jesus went to his cross, it was for the oppressed and forgotten people of the whole world. Thank God some of us know this. Everybody is God somebody. God is made of one blood, all nations. The mute, persistent condition that underlies high crime statistics and the drug culture is nothing more than self-rejection. Several generations of African Americans have suffered constant insults and abuse. Oh, why, why? It was intended, abuse was intended to destroy pride and self-respect. But someone prayed. And while they prayed, God shielded them with a wall of fire by night and a cloud by day. We as Christians cannot accept injustices inflicted on others and we will not participate in the infliction of such injustices ourselves. Or oh, we should become sensitive to our own involvement in injustice, whether direct or indirect, my friends. Or oh, we should cultivate a righteous attitude and a belief at the sight of any action that denies persons their God-given dignity and worth. Why, for an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Oh, years ago, the last 60 years, America developed a raised conscience on the subject of injustice. Supreme Court led the way with the 1954 school desegregation decision. <coughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stirred up further concern with his crusades. Students added more impetus with their sit-in movement and their university students revolted against the Vietnam involvement of our country. Yes, in the wake of these movements, a 20th century reconstruction occurred. Laws were passed in rapid succession. <laughs> Leadership of Congressman Adam Clayton Powell and many others. Oh, our white brothers and sisters stood in the trenches alongside, and we just say thank you. 
to refine the extension of the Constitution and to reaffirm the sublime promises of the Declaration of Independence. But yes, in the 1990s, 30 years later, 20, 2000, 40 years later, a new feeling has come into being supported by a strange view of Christianity that ignores the equality of persons before God and that treats with contempt all nations of fairness and equality. The coalition of super reactionaries, convenient evangelists, segregationists, anti-seminists, anti-blacks, anti-poor, anti-woman, anti-weak, anti-powerless, old-fashioned bigots have conspired to undo all of the gains that are made prior to what we used to go through before the civil rights era. But it will not be easy. Too many people have found out that everybody is God somebody. It is obvious to everyone that these are not the best days for the cause of justice in America even now. But the idea of justice is here and it's more powerful than marching on it. People can destroy affirmative action, but they cannot stifle that sense of worth that has been discovered and let loose among oppressed people. It is an idea whose time is here, and I know I'm right about it because God himself saw fit to give America its first African-American president on January 20th, 2009. Oh, my friends, Finally, my brothers and sisters, when we believe that God has made us all of one blood, that belief becomes the foundation for the building of a true, genuine, and lasting community among all people. One that rises above race and clan. One that extends beyond tongue and nation. Or one that embraces the whole human family. Black, white, brown, all of us. Such a community comes about in the hearts and the minds of persons and cannot be created by the government, cannot be established by the state or denied by the state. It's charter with what Paul proclaimed in Athens a long time ago. God has made us one, one blood, all nations. And we as Christians, regardless of our denominations, our church status, should have only one conviction, Pastor Crosby, and that is we have a common father and that our fellowship is the outgrowth of our faith in Jesus, one from Galilee. Thank God also that our fellowship can become the nucleus of a wider and a richer and a deeper community among all people, regardless of our race, regardless of our gender, Sister Hayes. Oh, or regardless of our national origin. Now, now, my friends, the Christian community sometimes, some years ago, should have held its head in shame when a so-called Christian university wanted to keep federal dollars while it violated the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It violated the Declaration of Independence, the teachings of Christ, the strong message of the prophets, the Supreme Court decision. Oh, by practicing racial separation in the name of Jesus. Oh, my friends, what a denial of Christ. Talking love, but they were spewing hatred. Oh, whenever we see this kind of behavior, it becomes urgent. It becomes urgent, my friends, that we proclaim to a dying world that God has made of one blood all nations. And now, now, now as I come, to a close, let's be it known that a new world is waiting out here to be ushered in. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a new condition among men and women waiting to be pierced the great clouds of our greed, our hate, our narrow nationalism, our childish preoccupation with our own importance. God has something better to offer us that will make racism, that will make war that will make nuclear stockpiling look like a nightmare, but we must begin where Paul began, proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ. For God has made of one blood all nations. And from this important doctrine, we then reveal our attitudes. 
We redesign our strategies. We redefine our goals and reorder our priorities to conform to the will of God. And that is to love ye one another as Christ has first loved us. Yes. Then it will start making sense to you to beat your souls into plowshares and have your spears into pruning hooks. Then will we understand why starving children everywhere should be fed. Yes. Then it will become a pure delight to see the walls of racism and the doors of bigotry come tumbling down and be replaced with an oasis of opportunity and righteousness will rise among us. Then will justice run down as many water and righteousness will flow like a mighty stream. For we are all God's children this morning and we are God's somebody, my beloved. God has made of us one blood, one nation and one blood and he cares for us all. Then we can relate with the hymn writer when he says, Come ye that love the Lord and let your joys be known. Yes. Join in a song yes. of sweet accord yes. and thus around the throne. Yes. Say, let those refuse to say who never knew our God, yes. but children, yes. children yes. of the heavenly king yes. may speak their joys abroad. Yes. Oh, my friends. Yes. God loves you. Yes, yes. And he's not going to forsake you. Yes. He's going to be with you always, yes. even until the end of the world. Yes, yes. Because he has made all of us mm -hmm. one blood, one yes. nation, through one blood. Mm -hmm. yes. We just have to just cry out, hallelujah. hallelujah. I will trust in the Lord.
and um, you've come, you want to become a part, affiliated with the First Union African Baptist Church? Yes. Okay. Um, you want to be baptized? Okay. Yes. All right. Pastor Crosby. Pastor Crosby, you know Pastor Crosby? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pastor Crosby got it from it. <laughs> Geneva, in the sight of all these folks here in the church, you prepared to walk down a path with me towards Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. We got some time to spend with each other with the Lord. Yes. But Lord willing, we'll invite all these people back to go with us down the river. Oh, we praise you for walking down this road with me. down this road, she is not making that commitment simply with God and herself. She's making it as part of fellowship with this body of believers. All right. And that means it is on all of us to put our arms around her and walk with her. Yes. Right. And so please take that seriously in your heart and stay tuned because this is a beautiful beginning. Yes. Amen. 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 to go forth from here to truly love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Amen. And the church all said, Amen. 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 You have entered to worship. May you depart, depart. to serve. Amen. Have a blessed week, everybody. Amen. Amen.